Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I'm your host, Will, and I want to thank you for tuning in. And I have a very special guest on today's podcast. I would love, love, love to welcome my homegirl from Pussy Talks, Miss C.L. How are you this evening? Well, hey, how are you? I am doing great. But I, li- I like your title, but I feel like that shit need a little bit more razzle dazz on it, like... <laughs> Sarcasms and motherfucking orgasms. <laughs> well, <laughs> folks, you hear that? <laughs> She's trying to change it up already. <laughs> uh, that's what you. I think I love the title of the show, and I'm just excited to be here. So, thank you for the invite. Well, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. I really do. So, um, I know about you, but my audience does not. So, why don't you tell them a little about you as well as your podcast? Okay, well, I definitely can do that. My name is CL, that's short for Mind Your Motherfucking Business. Mm -hmm. Um, And (laughs) I have a show, um, it streams on all platforms called Pussy Talks, where I talk to a group, a panel at a time between eight to 10 people, Mm -hmm. and they come to talk about whatever it is that I would like to talk about, uh, from parenting to sex, that we get a little sarcastic, we get a little orgasmic, but we have a good time. Um, it is a safe place for you to be who you are and what you are and to vent. Um, and that's what I do. I also host another show called Queens with Attitude uh, podcast, where it's me and four other great women. And we talk about social issues and relationship issues and we just get into it. So, Yes, yes, I, I hear that because... I was a part of the panel, and let me say, it was a very unique experience. It really was. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> your one conversation that you had on there, I enjoyed it. But seeing as how I didn't um, I didn't speak much about it, I still took a lot from it. And she had a really great panel. I enjoyed it. It was a group of Black men, which is very rare to see, because every time you get a group of Black men together, they're usually going you know, to jail. So <laughs> it was a little yeah. different. It was was trying, on my show, we're trying to change the narrative and be a little bit more transparent about our mental health and why it bothers us. And I think a lot of us kill each other when we're together. It's because we're so angry and don't know what to do with that passion or aggression. I mean, who's angry? None of them brothers were angry. They were just ill-informed, I want to say. Because <laughs> two of them were very unique characters they're very new characters but still you talked about some good things for the time that i was on there and i did enjoy it and i want to thank you extend olive branch for welcoming me onto it i really do you're welcome you're welcome you can always come back i think this week i'm doing uh i got two shows this week actually i'm doing a co-ed show i haven't even announced that yet because people are mad and then somebody bought my studio out for a show i'm doing a show called for the love of e where i have this bachelor and all his close friends we're gonna figure out why he can't find love or why he hasn't found love up until this point so it should be a really good show this week i'm definitely excited about it Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my thing. How did you get into podcasting? And then how did you come up with uh, your show, Pussy Talks? (laughs) Well, I used to teach a show. uh, I used to teach a class called Pussy Economics. Um, Pussy Economics? How is that? Pussy Economics. Yeah, it was great. Uh, It's actually, then we started calling it P Economics because, you know, we just did and uh, I was in a magazine. I don't know if I ever sent you the link uh, mm-hmm. recently. I was. And I was actually going through a tough time in my life. I went through a divorce. I call it my quarantine divorce. And I'm a writer. And I just had a page. And I would write, 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 write. And I was like, you have to do a show. You have to do a show. And I didn't want to do a show. So then eventually I did. Um, and during the quarantine, I don't know how you spent your pandemic. I used to do groups. I would do these huge video chats. And on some platforms, you could feel like 20, 30 people in there. And I would be there and I would do like game nights. We play drinking games. We would just talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. Kind of like how my show is. Um, But all we did differently was put a camera on there. And we just go for it. And it's full of just randomness. But it's an easy way to kill time. Because if you notice, although things are open now, people are still at home more than they ever were before. So Mm -hmm. I feel like podcasts, podcasts, 
are flourishing because people spend more time with their families and just at home versus going out now. So I kind of enjoy it. And so let me ask you this with how you've been doing things from pre uh, pre COVID to almost post now, what have you learned about yourself now that you didn't know about that? Um, about my writing skills. Um, because I've always been writing. I'm a published author, actually. I publish books. I went overseas when I was like 20 something with my college and I wrote a book called Summer Art in China. Mm-hmm. I also wrote uh, several scholarly journals with professors at my uh, school I graduated from. Okay. And then um, when I was younger, I would just always win writing contests. I didn't think that they were all that, but I would always win first place. And so my dad died recently of cancer in December. And um, that was really rough on me. And I think that's when a lot of my depression came in, watching him die. Um, it was it was tough. And so I was like, well, shit, you're going to die anyway. What are we going to do? And so he was like, you know, just talk to me. And I said, like, I'm going to talk to you. So I would always do my pussy economics and stuff, just the shit I would do. And so I started sharing it with him. And he would laugh. But it wasn't a good joke or something good to start a podcast unless I almost killed him. So he had lung cancer. <laughs> I'm sorry. He had lung cancer. So if I could make him laugh really hard and, and I'd be like, oh, wait a minute, go get somebody. That was a good joke. So I was like, if it don't kill my daddy, it ain't going on the show. And so I would just tell him things and he would just laugh. He's like, you so fucking stupid. You're trying to kill me. And um, from there, it just skyrocket and he encouraged me to do podcasts that's why I told that story uh, he's like somebody else got here this dumb shit because you are so stupid and um, he was in a nursing home when he had passed away and so I would go up there three four times a week and my dad couldn't have anything he couldn't even eat good stuff and so I would sneak him food oh my goodness I'm sorry I just start talking about him but anyway, we're gonna talk about this about him and I would sneak him food into the nursing home or into the hospital wherever he was because I don't know if you ever had anybody die from like cancer or anything like that but it's pretty not the best um so I would sneak him stuff and one day he was like Cortland I was like uh what's up he was like you know what I want I said what you want he said I want a beer I said you can't have no motherfucking beer you you can't <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I said, you can't have no beer. You're going to get us in trouble. I'm going to really kill you. He was like, I'm going to die anyway. So I go there a couple days later. So then I got this fanny pack, you know, the little thing that goes around your waist. So I had got him these beers. I had smuggled all the stuff. And my boobs are big. So I would stuff like like shots and all that stuff. So one day I came in there and he was like, uh, what you got? What you got? I ain't got nothing. got to keep it on the down low. So <laughs> I gave my dad these beers and we had drank these beers. We had took all these shots and we had to do it fast because if you get caught, you know, you get in trouble. So somebody was asking me recently, why do you spend all that time at the nursing home with your dad? I said, oh, I had to take a nap. They said, well, oh, I said, I'd be DUI. And they would just think that was so funny. And we just, we just had a good time. And I always said, if I ever had to go that way, I would want somebody to make it special for me like that. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't want to think about it, but we would drink, eat whatever he wasn't supposed to have, and I would leave like nothing ever happened. So it was like, you know, like like best friends. Like, you know how you go bust your best friend out of trouble? So it was kind of like that. So I enjoyed it. Wow. Wow. Huge inspiration. I can understand that because, you know, my podcasting experience comes from my brother. Uh, he was the <laughs> that we started it was because of him because when i was traveling for work he was like you say a lot of dumb shit yourself you should you know start a podcast because maybe people want to be interested in what you're saying and it spiraled from there so i completely understand i do and also you know my condolences to your dad passing so oh thank you i don't think he passed i just think he went to a better place today so it's cool. okay I'm, I'm better ready i can talk about it not getting upset so I do appreciate that. Would transition sound better? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't coming back. That's what I do know. <laughs> I mean, he could come back. He could be there with you right now. Oh, yeah. He's in the living room, actually. All right. So, yeah. He's <laughs> but so, and now moving forward, like, how has your podcast grown with you? 
with you having these panel like how do you find these people because when i was on i'm looking at all these brothers i'm like where the fuck did they come from <laughs> yeah that's how i am every week um so once a week i mean anybody could be a panelist on my show um i'll post on instagram and i need people facebook i need people um and people will just come other podcasters People that just see the clips, they be like, oh my God, I got to be a part of whatever it is you're doing because how did y'all even get to talk about this? So people are always excited when they see it that they want to participate. But the issue is I can only have so many people in the studio. But the vibe I give with my podcast, I could tell people, it's kind of like a barbecue. When you meet, when you go to barbecue or Thanksgiving, when you see all your favorite cousins, yeah. that's what the vibe it is. And yeah. we talk about some dumb shit, some serious stuff, and then some more funny stuff. So it's kind of like always like that. Um, I love it. In my second episode, I had 2.500 people oh, views. It was huge. Wow, I can barely get three. <laughs> oh, got yeah, I know, I know. Um, and so there was two ones that I want to talk to you about that I wrote down that were wasn't personal, but it was like I want to get more information. So you had two ones where it was big dick energy and dick transactionals. <laughs> what happened? Say the first one again. Yeah, big dick energy. Yeah. Okay. And then dig transactional. I think I'm saying that right, but I couldn't. Transactional dick is what it's yeah, called. Yeah, okay. All right. I got it backwards. How <laughs> did you come up with those? Okay. So I can't even remember how I said it, but it's just funny. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> transactional dick, because guys are always talking shit about women, and I absolutely hate it. Mm-hmm. But I'm not a male basher. I'm not a female basher. So I always have it in a um, a safe place. So transactional dick is kind of like when you're in the situation and you got to make something happen. You know what I'm saying? I can't even remember how I say it. Um, whatever the case is, you, you had a situation where you had to make something shake. Whether it be your car got impounded, you need some bail money, you need this, you need that. Um, and all you had to make it happen was some dick. So you had to make a transaction or a dick transaction to make something happen. Um, and one of the things I always see guys like the income tax season, they always end up with these big, unattractive, I want to be politically correct, girls that they normally wouldn't talk to. And I'm like, why is he with this girl? Oh, you know, it's income tax. They call them income tax season, babe. So that's called a dick transaction because you want her to share with you. So I said, have you ever been a victim of transactional transactional dick? Like you had to fuck her until her taxes hit, things like uh-huh. that. So yeah, that was that. Now, big dick energy. I don't know if that one's mine, but I do know what that means. <laughs> That one is when a guy ain't got nothing to bring but some dick. It may not even be good dick, but it's a big dick. So most women go for it until they don't. They find out that he don't know what to do with it. I mean, the two sound like they intertwine with each other, but that's just me. Well, when you got big dick energy, it helps your transactional dick. It's in the book. Don't worry. It's in the book. And what's the book called? <laughs> it, it, you don't need to know about the book. Just know it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for the people who are listening and watching, they might need, you know. The- Where is my book? Oh, that's just the book I write all my shows in and we talk about things. I have a lot of different vocabulary on my show, if you ever watched it. Because um, every week somebody comes to my show and say some shit that I'm like, what is that? So we have to define it and make it into a thing. So, yeah, it's yeah, in there. You definitely going to make a book. Mm-hmm. Working on it, working on it. Well, I bet you are. Um <laughs> <laughs> so I bring those up because they didn't apply to me because I've never been that type of guy. The reason why I say that because I wasn't raised like that. I wasn't raised to use a person or have a person use me to get things. That's why when I was on, Noah or I know of no, I've never done anything like that and I don't need to because like I said, my dad raised me to be independent and go and make it happen, not go make it happen through someone else. So it was a good topic. It really was, but it was a topic that I'm not gonna say I felt uncomfortable by it. I just felt ashamed because men have to sleep with somebody else to get something when that makes no sense. Like, don't be a bum, 
Don't leech off someone. Go make it happen for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. But see, the, the thing is this. This is the real world, uh -huh. unfortunately. And <clears throat> I'm not saying it's right and I don't condone it. But it, it's situations that I've actually seen firsthand. Um, and even on my show, people have come up with this confession sometimes. This is, it's a no judgment zone. But the same way guys have transactional dick, it's some women in this world that have transactional pussy. And they'll go on a date with you knowing they'll never fuck you, knowing that they'll never be in a relationship with you. But since you fed her, that was her transaction. Do you see what I'm saying when I say it that way? Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of people that do that. It's unfair, but I just wanted to talk about you know why was it a good transaction or a bad transaction was it something that you could get on your own it sucks but you got those girls like i seen i think a couple years ago they go to the all-star games with no money they don't have a way home they make a GoFundMe. like this is it, it's a social issue that's happening now yes. and i just wanted to kind of talk about it but make it funny you know what i'm saying because you can't it, it's a serious thing but sometimes we can have a serious conversation but make it fun if that makes sense yeah, it can be fun and it can be serious at the same time, but it also is who it's coming from because some of them don't take it serious. They just want to be all ha-ha games and not really take it serious and give um, give like better advice than what they've gotten about it. Uh, and yes, I remember myself when I was seeing all that going on. I'm like, you hoes is dumb. Like, you know, you're going down there with nothing. And you're going to come back with nothing, but you're still going to try it anyway. Like, what sense does that make? Why has... But from a podcast perspective, you can't say it like that. <laughs> Why can't you? <laughs> because, you, because you want people to open up to you. You don't want to have the judgment. So sometimes you have to get on their level to understand where they're coming from. You know what I'm saying? Like... I think that shit is very dumb. I do, but girl, what the fuck happened, Beach? How did you get here? You you have to, people have to be comfortable enough to talk to you and tell you their truth. And then after they tell you their truth and they hear their shit, sometimes when people say dumb shit and they hear it themselves, they like, that shit was dumb. But then it's your job as the host or whatever to give better advice than what the fuck they think is my opinion. You got to point that. Because I, I even with your homeboys, when they be like, I'd be like, dude, what the fuck was you thinking? How did you end up in jail? Well, see, I thought it was a good idea. Okay, tell me more. <laughs> so Yeah, or it'd be like four of y'all in the car. I'd be like, don't say nothing. Don't say that. Don't tell them it's my car. Like, bro, if you stole it, just say that. <laughs> let us, yeah, like, let us know something before we all get put in the pokey. Like, come on now. <laughs> exactly. So you got to, I, I feel like for me, on my show, we talk about different stages in our life. Like, yeah, most people on my show today shouldn't be making transactional dick. But in their 20s, you don't know what life they came from. So that's why you can't judge everybody. You got to say, okay, that's crazy. That's funny. Because some of the experiences that you have in life just make for funny ass stories or great yeah. experiences. I never do that shit again. But you know how to be like, you know, one day this is going to be a funny story. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does make funny stories and great content, but it seems though when they are telling it and then you ask them, well, what did you learn from it? They're just like, well, I'll never get in that situation again, but I'll still be willing to try. So it's almost like, why would you bother telling anything if you didn't learn nothing from it? Yeah, but that's not my place. No, it's not your place or mine, but in your mind, you're thinking, wow, you know you fucked up and you're just dumb as hell for saying that. My friend one time, we were all hanging out because I don't care. We we're all hanging out and I don't know if you know what spillover dick is or spillover pussy. You may not, but I'm here to educate you. Okay, it's in book. So right, that's a situation. She's going to run, run on some games. So peep in. Come on. We've all been there. Maybe not you personally, but it ain't about you personally. I'm just telling my story here. Okay. So mm -hmm. you ever had a situation where you, it, you would probably call it take one for the team. Oh, yeah. So right and so you got four girls and four guys and one of the girls may not be all oh god she just ain't where you wanted to be but you don't want to kill the vibe for everybody else so you give her conversation yeah. or entertain her babysit her yeah. so that way she don't cop block her girlfriend uh -huh. that's never happened to you oh no it has but right so you, that now you can take cool. it further 
and become transactional dick, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people, since some people will for entertainment purposes, and they call that spillover dick. Like, I only fucked the fat chick because it was spillover. <laughs> so, like that. And you just have to make lieu of it because we all have a story like that. Like, one time I had to talk to a guy, and let me tell you, he was so cute, by the way. So, I was spillover pussy because, you know, I rolled with somebody. And so I'm talking to the guy and he was like this. And he's kept doing this. I'm like, why won't you look at me? Look at me. He wouldn't turn from the wall. So we had been talking for a while. And I don't know how this happened to me, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. And so we're drinking, we're hanging out. And I'm laughing because I love to talk to people anyway. And I'm just here to entertain you. I have no intentions on giving you none of this pussy. But we're going to have this conversation. Why didn't this motherfucker not only have one arm, but he also only had one motherfucking eye. I was like, <laughs> how the fuck did I get here? I, and then when I figured it out, I couldn't stop saying shit like, I, I will be right back. I see you, player. And I kept pointing because now I'm drunk and I didn't know this. I'm looking on the floor. He's like, what you looking for? I said, I can't see it. <laughs> I'm looking for your eye. Now, I'm not saying that that should have went that way. But these is real life situations that most of us have got into from our dumbass friends that tell you, oh, I got somebody over here to talk to you, but they don't tell you their disability. So now if I'm spill over pussy, I'd be like, what's wrong with him? I ask that shit off top. Do he got all his limbs? Do he got two motherfucking eyes? I need to know. Like, I got a checklist now. So when you think about it, transactional dick is like, oh man, how did you get into these situations? And most importantly, how did you get out of it? Oh, wow. I'm sorry, but I couldn't get over it. I couldn't do the one I think, but then I kept on trying to give him a handshake on the arm that he had the arm with. It was just all bad. Um, It was bad, but... But one eye and one arm? Yeah, he, he was all fucked up. I was like, because he was like pressed against the wall like this and shit. I'm like, why are you being shy? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm loud. So after he got comfortable, I was like, oh. It, it was just bad. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, well, I could say I took one for a team. Um, I was in Florida on spring break, Orlando. And we went to this club. Well, we went to the beach and we went to this club. Then there was like four of us, but there was like three girls. And then then there was another one. Like this another one, she was really cute, but she kind of like had Tourette's syndrome. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's not funny to laugh at people's disabilities, but we're just telling the story. Yeah. Continue. She had Tourette's syndrome and she would speak, but she would just blurt out things. Of course, we all know what Tress is. So I'm sitting there. I was like, hi, I'm Will. She was like, hi, I'm Stephanie, fucker. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so we're sitting there. Who is this talking to? <laughs> yes. I was around. <laughs> and everybody's just, you know, talking to everybody else. She was really cute. Really good build. Good build. Talking to her. Bought her a drink. We're sitting there laughing and joking. Every like every couple words, she would just say something weird. So I just had to push through it, like really push through it. And then we're all getting ready to leave. I leave first because I'm like, if I can avoid her, I get out of it. Nope, nope. She was like, follow me like a lost puppy. Like she just found her best friend in the world. Oh so man. Ended up going back to her dorm room, and I'm like, yeah, I don't do this. This is not me. Um. So I, I'll talk to you again. And this is like pre, like before all, you know, social media and everything. Luckily, I didn't give her my number or nothing. But yeah, I would never hook up with a Tourette girl ever. Never, ever. That is so, I feel like for that, I would, because I'm crazy. I love people. Um, but you didn't have to tell people stuff like that up front. You can't just be like, swing on me. You ain't got one fucking eye. Like, fuck. Like, I can see how it could be uncomfortable. But actually, I, I know two people with Tourette's. They pretty cool if you can get past that. Fuck me in the ass, bitch. Who the fuck can fuck you in the ass, bitch? You need to calm down. Because first of all, why is that even in your mind anyway? You know, like, how did we get here? You know, I'm that friend. And just the way she was sitting, like, everybody was warning her. Kind of like you're a one-armed pirate. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a one-armed pirate. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah. see, this made a better conversation because we're relating on something. Mm-hmm. 
And yeah. I think that's what makes podcasting so fun because you can get people to be transparent, speak their truth. And yeah, it was a shitty situation, but you can laugh about it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fuck like that. Sorry, I just wanted to do this. <laughs> I quit. I quit. I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. Well, no, I feel so far. <laughs> it's been nice. I've talked to some people, had some good interviews, and it's been nice, you know, sharing stories. But there's a lot of different walks of life when it comes to podcasting and listening, and then trying to match up with people you think would be a good fit, and you actually sit down with them, you find out there's more to their story than they're actually letting on. So, and I'm almost kind of afraid but i'll still take that chance it's kind of like when you go to the bar like right before last call you just see what's there and then you're like well i'll just pick the best pick of the litter and see what happens and then you end up regretting that mistake Mm -hmm. because i had this one girl oh i'll still never forget i had a pre-interview with her she was like yeah i have uncontrollable orgasms i'm like okay yeah yeah yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Oh, sure we're talking about it. And next thing I know, she's in deep conversation all about her. And while she's talking, she's having an orgasm the whole time. And I'm just sitting there for 20 minutes trying to figure out what the fuck to do. I really am. And after that, I never talked to her again. I blocked her on everything I possibly could. But she still tries to find me asking me when she can, when can she come on and be a guest. Send her to me. I'll take her. I, I'll enjoy her. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, because I have a no judgment free zone. I love to hear. Well, I have follow up questions because I just want to know, like, well, bitch, when did this start happening to you? Did someone go in there too deep and click something that we can't get off now? Like, I got questions. So, nah, her story says she started experiences when she was 13, and now she's like 38. So, good 20 some years. Oh, wow. It heightens when, you know, she has sex. It makes you eat better and then worse at the same time. Because she said when someone hits that spot, she just loses all control. Hey, different strokes, literally, for different folks. Yeah, hopefully someone's not giving her the stroke she wants. There's nothing wrong with that. I love it. I love it. Uh, well, I, I can't. I, I just couldn't. It, it wasn't the best fit for me or my listeners, at least. That's what I feel. Well, that's cool. But I, I, my thing is, I've had some... I don't know if you've had to shelve anything yet. Like, shelf it. Like, this is not coming out. Shelving it. Nobody will ever see this. But I've had a couple of those because my thing is, I like to have fun, if you don't know that. I like to have fun. I like to have a good time. I hate arguing. I hate negativity because I got a corporate job. Everything about my real life is very serious. So when I'm doing podcasts, which I don't get paid for, that's my free time. I want to hang out. I want to have fun. I want to laugh. But I've had episodes where people come on there and just be so negative. And I just shelved it. Nobody ever see it. Mm -hmm. But that's just me because I don't want that energy put on me or put out there. Yeah, I get that. I do. And I just... I just try to, like you said, make the best of it, and I have, and it's been really nice. It really has. So, um, just trying to, you know, build as I go and meet more and more people because you just never know. You really don't. And find your niche. Like, you'll find it. Like, I just, I love it. I'm an entertainer, so I just be like, let people talk their shit. Like, let people get it out. Because at, at the end of the day, this is what makes me keep doing it. Some people don't have an outlet at all. Some mm-hmm. people have nobody to talk to. And, you know, suicide rates went up a lot during the pandemic. I don't know if you know that. Um, so that's why I built a safe place for my listeners and my panelists just to get it all out. Because some people are carrying some shit that we don't know nothing about. And sometimes that laugh that they got on my show was the first laugh they had in months, sometimes years for some people. So you are really building a safe haven for people. Um I think it's going to be so great for you. Well, I'm trying, and I definitely thank you for the words of inspiration. I truly do. It means a lot. It really does. I believe in you. I told you that the first time I met you, I think that you are just so awesome. (laughs) Well, thank you. I'm just trying my best and trying to be my real natural self and not have any type of facade about me. So I understand. I understand. Yes. So 
um want to say this to you so if people want to come and listen to you or be a part of your show how can they get a hold of you oh shit y'all can holla at your girls like now i'm just playing <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm on all platforms if you want to listen to my shit i'm on spotify youtube spreaker matter of fact if you google pussy talks i'm the first 15 things that's gonna pull up you spell pussy p-u-s-s space c-e-e talks and actual name of my show is puss but people be like hey aren't you the girl from the show pussy i'm like stop saying it all together like that you gotta say it spread apart like the, the tribe called quest you gotta split that shit up say and you don't understand it. how embarrassing it is i was at my auntie's 60th birthday party and and once she's like, yeah, she got some good pussy. You heard pussy, that pussy good. And this old man walked up to me. He was like, you don't want everybody talking about with that good pussy. I said, if you don't get your nasty ass out my face. <laughs> so I would say it all that to say, when you have a risky name for a podcast, the people that you're going to attract are not always the best. Like the girl who wanted to let you know how her pussy be popping. Yep. Or you're going to get people that are more curious. So Everybody thinks my show is a nasty show and it's like nothing about sex. We just talk about random shit. But they be like, girl, we don't, we don't talk about pussy. But we, we don't typically talk about pussy at all. But since you brought it up, here we are. But I'm on all platforms. Um, I'm on Instagram at Pussy Talks, Facebook at Pussy Talks, and I am CL. So you can always find me if you Google those things or look me up. I'm out here. And if you want to be a guest, just hit me up and I'll be like, what's up? I'll be like, hey, girl, hey. So I'm here for it. Girl, <laughs> I'm you are too it. much. <laughs> you are too much. Don't be scared. That's what I'm saying. Don't be scared now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on, being a guest, talking a little bit with me about you, your podcast, and your one-eyed pirate story. So. <laughs> don't be telling me. I don't think I've ever told anybody that story. Matter of fact, let me tell people that. I'm not telling people nothing. You told them. I just got you to say it. <laughs> right, but that's the point of podcast. You you talking to somebody, but like, I don't know how the fuck we got here. I still don't know how we got here. Actually, I put that shit so back far in the back of my mind, I forgot that even happened to me. So that's the fun of it. Like you remind people of shit that they tried to suppress and forget about. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, definitely. So people, if you want to find Miss CL, you can just Google Pussy Talks and she'll be there smiling at you. Say, hey, come join me. <laughs> just don't come when you join me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But if you do, make sure you bring that shit because she is going to talk that shit because I know firsthand. So I want to thank you, Miss CL. Thank you for joining me. And this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I'm Will, and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.